Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Friday evening edition of The Viewpoint. I'm Sanket Upadhyay. A lot has been said and discussed through the day about the horrific lynching of a Jammu and Kashmir cop. But beyond those meaningless political bickering that take place on uh, primetime television, we have a different viewpoint here on this show. Spare a thought for the Jammu and Kashmir police cops, the force, not the babus, not the officers, but the frontline commandos, the constables. They are India's first line of defense against terrorists and stone pelters. It can easily be said that there is, you know, in fact, their job is the most difficult job in this country. Then why is it that there's money to fund security to separatists, but no funds or will to buy enough bulletproof vests or even enough bulletproof vehicles? Where is the will and the funds to pay more risk allowance to these cops? Which, by the way, is just 100 rupees, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine? Yes, 100. For perspective, a CRPF Jawan gets 4,500 rupees as risk allowance. Why aren't state of the art equipments not being bought for a force which undoubtedly is facing the world's toughest law and order challenge? Or do we assume the absolute worst? That the hands of these cops are tied by political compulsions in the valley. Let's quickly take a look at all the headlines that we are tracking in this Friday edition of The Viewpoint. Kashmir turns on its own and yet another brave is killed in the line of duty. Deputy SP Mohammad Ayu Pandit was stripped, dragged and lynched by a frenzied mob outside Srinagar's Jama Masjid last evening. All for doing his job. Now, while Pakistan proxy Mirwais Umar Farooq was preaching inside the mosque, the mob that lynched Ayu Pandit was busy chanting slogans in the name of Zakir Musa, the former commander of the Hizbul Mujahideen. That's a headline number two. And headline number three, no money for bulletproof vans for Kashmir police officers, but crores are spent on security for separatists. Why is protecting Pakistan proxies more important than securing the Kashmir first line of defense, that is Jammu and Kashmir police cops? That's the question that we are asking. And also, the Enforcement Directorate is probing links between the Hurriyat Conference and 2611 Mastermind Hafiz Said. Are taxes being used to pay for their security? Time to end the Z-level security of these India haters. That's the point that we are going to discuss in this Friday edition of The Viewpoint. But first, remember, they are our first line of defense, but who will keep them safe? Jammu and Kashmir cops are in fact entitled to a hardship allowance of 10% of their basic pay. They want it raised to 20%. Remember, these are basic demands, basic, absolute basic demands of a police force, which by the way, is doing or has the toughest job in this country. For perspective, CRPF constable posted in Kashmir gets 4,500 uh, 4, rupees per month as a risk allowance. That for a Jammu and Kashmir cop is only 100 rupees the point that we emphasized on at the beginning of this show. Jammu and Kashmir cops ration money is three times less than a CRPF constable's 3000 rupees per month as ration money. 15 bulletproof vehicles are there for cops in 10 districts in Kashmir. 15 only. The requirement is 50, 50. That is the difference that we are talking about. An army jawan martyred in Kashmir gets 1 crore rupees compensation. A cop gets only 10 lakh rupees. Why? That is the question that we are asking at this moment. Enough of political bickering. Answer these main questions. This is what we want to ask our political dispensation. And that brings us to the blunt question that we are asking tonight. Time to empower and strengthen Jammu and Kashmir police. Let's admit, ladies and gentlemen, theirs is the toughest job in this country. It's the toughest. Let's empower them if we want any, any practical difference in Jammu and Kashmir. Joining us on this broadcast are going to be T.R. Kakkar, ex-special secretary in uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs for Jammu and Kashmir. He feels that no carrot and stick policy for separatists. Major General Rajesh Arya is a defense expert. His view is that stern action must be taken against uh, the separatists. Amit Malviya will be joining us, BJP spokesperson. He says the center will deal with separatists sternly. 
Samir Kaul of the National Conference, he's also a spokesperson, feels that PDP has been soft on separatists. P.K. Mishra, former ADG of the BSF, says that separatists are a roadblock to peace in Kashmir. But the big question that we are asking at this moment is this. Enough talk about separatists. Why not empower the Jammu and Pol Kashmir police constables? In fact, uh, let me now first go across to Mr. Rajesh Arya. Uh, Major General Rajesh Arya is here with me. Uh, Major General Arya, you know, the point that I want to ask at this moment is this. They are the first line of defense. But who is going to keep them safe? Sanket, if we take our memory back to 80s, the Punjab militancy was crushed by Punjab police. Yes. The Naxal Mines in the late 90s or early 2000 from Andhra was moved, out, was moved into the hinterland of the Bastar by greyhounds of the Andhra police, yes. raised out of the Andhra police. Yes. The local police has a very important role in a local issues hmm. and the Kashmir is a local issue hmm. first. Hmm. And therefore, I think it has been a gross negligence on part of the various successive governments that they have not empowered the JNK police to a level where the JNK police becomes a potent force to fight militants. Hmm. Uh, let me tell you that local intelligence, the local information, what a local constable and a local uh, policeman has it, no central police force can have it. Yes. No central security force yes. can have it. Do you think they their are hands also are tied? dependent on them. Major General Arya, do you think their hands are tied? I am asking a very, very pertinent question. Do you think they are not being allowed to do their job? I do not think they are not allowed to do their job. They have not been strengthened to do a job which they are supposed to have been done in decades hmm. back. And this is today's, I'm, uh, you know, my condolences to the family of the DSP Ayub. Yes. This is one of the strategy of the militants to create a sense of fear in the local population, not to join the JK police and not to support the central Absolutely. security forces. Absolutely. Samir Kaul, you know, I want to come across to you. Uh, most of these Jammu and Kashmir police constables that you speak to, and they are the first line of defense. You know, because if there were to be a ring, they, they, they actually form the outer periphery. Then you have got the paramilitary forces and then you have got the army performing the operation. So they are the ones who are subjected to the maximum ire uh, of the public. They need to be strengthened the most. But what is the reality? Usually, when you speak to them, they have no respect from politicians who fear dip in popular support. Over 60% of the police stations, even in sensitive districts, are understaffed. Basic safety gear like bulletproof vests are denied. Lowest composition if killed on duty, as we just told you. Just 10 lakh rupees. I mean, the, they are just sitting ducks. And politicians have made them like this. Well, um, good evening to everyone. And to thanks for giving me an opportunity to speak. We at the National Conference re realize the importance and have always realized the importance of the state police force in maintaining law and order because we've always believed that they have a they have the maximum chance of being the most efficient given the local input that they receive and you know to the extent that today when we heard about this dastardly act that had been committed something dehumanized act that happened we we were we have we, we took not even a minute to announce a 10 lakh rupees grant to the local police fund so but but i having said that 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 reinforcing the local police is perhaps the highest priority should be accorded to it but the problem in jnk at the moment is slightly different if you allow me to say that that it is not basically a, a problem of understaffing because you must realize that Jammu and Kashmir has the second largest police then force in this problem? country after the youth after Uttar Pradesh. Why are they sitting ducks? And rightly so because it is a fairly the problem is that today yes let me let me speak and I'll tell you the problem today is that because of the entire population taking a different view of things and these population is part of the same society that these police officers of the JNK police and constables of the JNK police come from, they are really finding it difficult to, to enforce that kind of order because their neighbors, their neighbor's sons, their brothers, their in-laws are part of this angry, angry population. You And, and that, is, that is really 
really, really, and I must warn my people, and uh, as from the national conference, that we have already seemed to have entered the gates of civil war. Like situation. Okay. We have all. Okay. We, the, the Mr. Society Mr. T R Kakkar has almost seems to offer a social sanction Kakkar, to such activity. Been the ex and secretary. I think this is yes. dehumanizing okay. and okay, fine. I got your point. of the social fabric. Samir, call. No, I've got that your is the point. point. That is I've the got point. Your point. We really need to okay, keep. Okay, fine. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kakkar, first I want to come. All, yes. Yes. Opening comments. Go ahead. First of all, let me condemn the dastardly act that has been committed by yes. the separatist. Now, we were uh, talking of empowering the local police and an example of Punjab police was given. There is no doubt that the entire militancy in Punjab was covered by the Punjab police. Hmm. But, but, the Punjab police chief, Mr. K.P.S. Gill, had an absolute control and absolute hand in the entire thing. The then chief minister, the cabinet, and the central government had given him total powers to curb that, which is not the case in Jammu and Kashmir. Why not? Now coming to Jammu and Kashmir, that, that you will have to ask the uh, uh, state government and the hmm. central government. Hmm. I am only saying, look what is, what is happening is, that in Jammu and Kashmir today, it is not just the separatists who are calling the shots, it is the Khalifat, it is the Wahhabism which has which is spreading its tentacles all over mm. in the last three, four years. That is why you see the ISIS flag and other things. Now, the ISI people have made it very clear that they are no more going in for Azadi, but they are going in only for establishing... So, basically, Mr. Kakkar, what you are trying this, to say... This, I, I, this I get your point. Situation. Mr. Kakkar, basically... Just one moment. Uh, Mr. Kakkar, basically what you are trying to say, and I will go across to Mr. P.K. Mishra in just a short moment, but this question is for you. Uh, Amit Malviya. Basically what Mr. Kakkar is trying to say is that this is an abnormal situation. It's not a normal situation. I don't know what political compulsions force and, this and situation. Me, it's an, one more, one more one comment. One moment, Mr. One more comment. Me, I, I want to bring one in Mr. Malviya. Comment. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Mr. Malviya, okay. I don't okay. know if you know this or not, but your cops, since you are in an alliance with the PDP, uh, you know the cops over there and we have this information which I am going to read out and we will put this presentation on the screen also. The proposals that the Jammu and Kashmir police has given to the political dispensation because they feel that there is an absolute state of unrest right now in Jammu and Kashmir and no amount of normalcy can happen unless the police gets strong powers. We are not talking about the army, we are talking about, we are talking about the Jammu and Kashmir police. Proposal number one, impose governor's rule in Jammu and Kashmir. The political dispensation cannot handle it. Proposal number two, legitimize special operations group and pay them extra. Their pay is paltry. And nowhere in the world can a complex situation like Kashmir be handled with that sort of pay. Number three, for every action by local terrorists, their kin must pay the price. I know it's radical, but none of these proposals have been accepted. They are, they are gathering dust by the state government. Number four, Plan grenade or IED blasts at the homes of local terrorists so that it disincentivizes going ahead with an act of terror. And number five, book miscreants en masse under the Public Safety Act. Mr. Malvia, to these pointed questions, I want to know from you. No cop, Mr. Malvia, is going to come to you and say that these are our official proposals. Give us the right. But has even an iota of these five proposals been accepted by the political fraternity? And by extension, you, because you are in power in JNK. Sure. Look, I hear what you are saying. But let me uh, point out to you some that will put this whole debate in context. What is happening in the valley is not something that started off yesterday. It has been there since 1989 and perhaps even before that. Uh, for these many years, there was an overwhelming narrative, or at least that we were made to believe so, that it was about Kashmiris, it was about Azadi and the people of Kashmir were in the same way in demanding freedom as the separatist or the visible separatist spaces were. But it's only over the last year, year and a half, that it's become quite evident that the aspirations of the people of Kashmir is not the same as those of separatists. As the government of the day has been closing in, on these separatist elements, as exposing their financial networks, their resource networks, it is becoming evident that they now want to hit back and they would not even shy away so from... So how do you fight back? 
You can't have the police's hands tied behind their back, you know, to deal exactly. with a situation like this. Absolutely. So now coming to the next uh, situation here, that how much do we empower the JNK police over what it is currently enjoying, given that Valley is a troubled zone? Mr. Uh, Kakkar does not agree with you. These are very important questions. Yes, yes, Mr. These Kakkar. are very important questions. Now, you said that uh, they have raised, they have given a proposal to say that there should be special uh, uh, police, there should be uh, the uh, kings of the terrorists who must be attacked. There, all these things used to happen. I am talking to you when in 1999-2000 we had an absolute right to go in for the uh, kids and kings and we had absolute right to do anything that was, that was required to... to uh, uh, curb this militancy. In Punjab, let me tell you, those of you who, are, who may not know, that when the Pun Punjab terrorists started attacking the policemen, Mr. Gill had a very, very clear order that... You know, it's interesting that you keep mentioning uh, Mr. K.P.S. Gill. I, I understand, Mr. Kakkar. Pick up their families. Pick up their families and now deal with them. Now yes. deal with them. Pick Mr. up P.K. Mishra. And deal with them. Mr. P.K. This Mishra, I want to bring you in Can because you haven't spoken. Mr. P.K. Mishra, do you think that right now, yes. for the radicalized situation that exists in the valley, we need some radical and drastic steps to be taken? For instance, empowering the Jammu and Kashmir police. Why are these five suggestions gathering dust? Sanket, uh, I, I find that you find that you are absolutely correct why it is lying in dust. I have seen it personally. It is not the first time that in Anantanag the gypsy was, police gypsy was blown and the SHO was killed with, along with five constables. It is not the first time that in Nawata one DSP was leased. <coughs> there itself one CRPF commandant was attacked and I have seen myself when another police gypsy was totally blasted at uh, Nalamar Road in front of Mirwais, mm. Manjil and all the six, six police constables, they died on the spot. This happens because this, there are no clear good leaders in police in Jammu Kashmir police to give them the, the, uh, the, the path, the axis how to proceed. I can well tell you, the police, they don't have proper bulletproof vehicles, they don't yes. have all these proper good equipment, they don't have yes. good arms, they don't have bulletproof jackets, they don't have all-terrain vehicles. I have seen that. How I do you, have walked with... How, how do you expect them to fight, Amit Malviya? You know, it's nice to yes. enter into a political yes, debate. They are doing everything. Call and Amit Malviya it will debate extensively. It is the government political leadership which has to tell them. Yes. You know, you will debate extensively. Do you realize? Amit Malviya, do you realize this is the crux of the matter? You can't just condemn the people. You need political will to do this. Just one moment. Amit yes, Malviya, political correct. will is required to do I this. Political will is a must because the police is totally demoralized. One moment. Yes. For sophisticated vehicles to take on the kind of insurgency when, that when, at the moment. When? But that's important. We have lost Umar Fayaz. We have lost Firoz, the cops, Firoz Ahmad Dar, who basically said he told the cops that I need a yeah. bulletproof vehicle. And we have now lost Mohammad Ayub to a frenzied mob, to a lynch mob. Okay, well, when? It's not as if. The JNK police did not have bulletproof vehicles. They did have them. Only fact, 15. The requirement was 50. 15 and 50. One five and five zero. That is the difference. You know, the problem is... CRPF has a lot of bulletproof vehicles. Okay, I'm running short of time. They are getting blown up, blown up in the, in the next area. Please, the bulletproof vehicles alone are not going to provide you safety and security. It is... Telling the policemen that you have to deal with them and we are with okay. you. We are behind you. Okay. Unless the leadership says that, I think we will we'll continue to suffer in the fashion we I are. I, I think it all boils down to political will. Uh, this is a short okay. duration di discussion. No, I have very limited I time. I want to give the last here. word to Major General Arya. Major General Arya, do you think at the end of it, it all boils down to political will? I mean, it, it is very convenient for political parties to take these respective political positions enter into a meaningless, uh, you know, political bickering, round of bickering. This is the real issue. If you want to fix Kashmir, this has to be done.
Sanket, it is quite surprising that we all sitting so far away from JNK, we do not acknowledge the reality, some of the re ugly realities of the JNK. One has spent a lot of time in the valley. There are no beggars in the valley. Hmm. Everybody has a shelter. Nobody sleeps on the road. Not even a single civilian dies because of the severe cold. Valley is a very rich part of the state. So much of money has been pumped in by the center into the valley. Hmm. But still if our instruments of governance do not have the funds and the will to do it, it all boils down to the political okay. will. Okay. It has not been provided to okay. them. Major General Arya and all the other gentlemen who joined us, uh, I apologize, uh, short duration discussion that we are having, uh, having at this moment. At the end of it, I just want to say that, you know, we have money to splurge on the security of the separatists. Yes. Just think for once, if this money, 10 crore rupees, were spent on buying better equipment and equipping and having the political will to arm the Jammu and Kashmir police better and not tie their hands to the back, would it make a difference in the valley or not? We're taking a short break at this moment. Uh, when we come back, we'll stay with this story because we have got an interesting presentation on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching The Viewpoint. Uh, we just want to put things in perspective for you to show you just how poorly equipped Kashmir's protectors, the first line of defense, the Jammu and Kashmir police officers really are. Take a look at the two images on your screen right now. On the one hand, you have police officers from the world over, from Austria to Mexico to Bosnia to even China, who are all armed with guns, proper shields and headgears, shoulder and knee pads and even gas masks. Whereas our Kashmiri cops only have lathis and cane shields. And this, by the way, in a state which is the most volatile in this country, and a police force which is facing the most challenging task as opposed to any other police force in this country. Time we thought about all these things. We are leaving you with these images. Good night.